the water change thing and the tank at the thumbnail. We'll talk about that and a lot more in this video. There's a ton to discuss. Supposedly water changes, no water changes has been a hot topic. And a lot of this reason is because the cyclic guys and the natural guys kind of keep tanks differently. And I've kept many aquariums and I've done it in so many ways. And there's a lot of different reasonings in why you would want to change the water, why you wouldn't want to change the water. So nobody's really right and wrong there. There's a lot of misinformation and maybe a little bit of a uh, kind of semi-aggression going on, especially bigger channels trying to mess with smaller channels and push their weight around as far as the subject goes. But I might have to go full fish, Jesus. Many of you guys know me from like years ago. A lot of people don't really know me and what I've done in, uh, throughout the years. So I'm going to help with you guys about that no water change and water changes. Some of the scenarios, um, some of the tanks I've gone through as well. And uh, how they're both kind of right and how they're both kind of wrong. The whole psychology of it all. And I've got a few notes here, but I've got lots of examples around to show with you guys. But first of all, a big topic, the nitrate and ammonia thing. When it comes to aquariums, ammonia and nitrate, yes, plants do eat up both nitrate and ammonia. Plants actually love ammonia. A lot of people ask me, um, don't you ever test for nitrates? Even if I have, I keep a lot of no filters, so you can actually hear flies buzzing around well i don't have any in here but if there was a fly in here you could hear it buzzing around it's so quiet in this fish room because i've got no filters i've kept filtered tanks i've done the whole aquascaping tank and then i've gone all natural now a lot of these guys that are keeping these cichlid tanks let's say uh caveman aquatics kg uh cichlids and uh or kg tropicals whatever his name is um and then also Ben Ochart, all three cyclic guys made videos talking about the whole natural method. And Ben had a lot of grace with his video. He didn't really do much. He wasn't peddling a project product like the other two were. The other two are actually trying to sell you something within their video at the same time. But Father Fish's video, which they wanted to go ahead and make a thing about because um, it was a catchy title, catchy thumbnail, took off all that stuff. And for them to call Father Fish out on that clickbait, or it wasn't even clickbait, on that title and stuff, like these guys do the same thing. So the hypocrisy, we kind of, we don't need that kind of stuff in this hobby. So hopefully um, we can make things more amends and get more of an understanding. That way there's not quite such a division within the hobby because of this subject. But um, water changes have been known to kill fish. I've did a few polls on my channel recently and half of the people have lost fish due to a water change, especially if you're living in the city, sometimes they flush things in the pipes. You don't know what they're doing with your water. You can't always um, do something about it and sometimes things just happen like you may have forgot this on or you went over too much water change or just the oxygenation and the gases within the water could kill your fish so if you have been keeping fish for a really long time and like years and years and you end up losing a fish due to a water change you start thinking, hey, well, my main problem here is changing the water. I've been, these fish have been fine for a long time. I haven't had to change my water. And so that happens to you after a while. Now, these cichlid guys, the guys that keep the big cichlids, yes, it's harder to keep them in a situation where you don't need a water change. If they wanted to do that, they could get a big sump filter or something like that because beneficial bacteria can also clean out that ammonia and nitrate and help with those problems. So if you're over cleaning your filter and you're having problems with your nitrates, well, that's probably why you're over cleaning it. Now, KG, I know KG Tropicals, they end up uh, 
I know he washes his out in aquarium water when he washes out his canister filter. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to totally clean it away and uh, take away all that beneficial bacteria because that stuff does help clean out your water, your nitrates and balance all that stuff because it feeds and eats off of it. Kind of acts like an algae scrubber, sort of, but instead of algae, it's beneficial bacteria. And then also we've got Father Fish's method, which has the deep substrate method. And yes, it's a good method. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Very natural, very wallstead. And it's actually not even necessary when it keeps to keep in aquariums. I've kept pretty decently stocked. I would say moderately stocked. Not high stock is when like the fish are slammed in the tank, but moderately stocked fish in no filter aquariums and have no problem with no substrate, just beneficial bacteria. Now there is a difference in a lot of the vision between these two worlds that I have to point into because I am talking about nano fish. Now the guys that were making these videos are cichlid keepers, so they don't quite completely understand the whole nano world. So for us natural keepers and nano keepers, natural kind of tends to be an easier way where we can keep more of those nano fish because smaller tanks usually lead into collectoritis. Those big cichlid tanks, harder to get collectoritis on those because you do need big tanks for those fish. And there's just so many ways. There's no one size fits all for this aquarium hobby. And there's many ways to do it. So I think we both need more understanding the cichlid guys and the natural guys, which most of our natural guys, we kind of understand the whole filtration cichlid thing because we've all ended up being there and then going down into the natural route because that's kind of the evolution of it and psychology of it all is what do people want to do when they first get a uh, aquarium it's kind of like what kind of car do you want to first drive uh do you want to drive this uh, well i don't know what kind of natural car there is but it's like either the high on day or you get the lambo a lot of people want the really clean magazine tanks and they do strive to get there but it is a lot of work to maintain and you do need water changes for those scenarios but then you have other scenarios say like this that's right next to me I don't know how well you guys will be able to see it, but this is completely cloudy, but is completely covered in Daphne and shrimp. Now, if I go doing a water change in that tank, that's going to destroy my Daphne colony. I'm not going to get as many fish to breed. And also, if you're breeding fish, you don't really want to do water changes as much because you're going to be disturbing your fish. I've got these really rare barbs. One of my latest videos was about braiding them, which I kept in a tank down here, which this was actually crystal clear just the other day, but I like to leave my door open and then it gets green water, but I don't mind because there's baby fish in there. But there's many reasons why a tank gets like that. Now I haven't been doing water changes in it. The whole time they were in there for breeding, never once did a water change but I do have beneficial bacteria in there. I've got microorganisms in there. There's a whole micro web of microcosma of just stuff going on in that aquarium that all helps it out. And when you do those water changes, you pull that stuff away. And when that tank was at its dirtiest, that was when it was at its best breeding moment. Some people were wondering why I cleaned it after I knew that that worked. Well, the experiments will always go on. I had to test them up here, then we'll continue to test them down there, but yada, yada, yada. Uh, another example here, as far as no water changes go, this pond, look how clear this water is here on this pond. Now, Caveman Aquatics was giving me a hard time because I got dirty tanks trying to tell me his was cleaner than mine, this, that, and other. Like this tank's clean, especially when you first set up tanks. Oh my God, they'll shine like the cleanest because they just haven't had time to age. But this pond has been set up since I've been here. And it has had like maybe one water change because I was trying to battle the algae. But then I got tired about battling the algae. But look at the water quality. Crystal clear. Look at this. These have never had the water changed at all. These are Cottle Punctatus. They're breeding. 
Hopefully the internet does good for us on here too. And uh, Hurricane Aquatics, thank you so much for becoming a member. Peplin Aquatics, I saw yours, or Peplin Creek, I saw yours too. Crystal clear, crystal clear. Now this tank here, let me move you slowly so I don't whip you guys around too much. Like that one looks gnarly. It's like, eh, gross, right? But no, the water is actually really clear. It's just the tank is dirty. So if I don't have time to scrape these tanks up, then yeah, maybe they look dirty. Look at this one with the barbs. You can't even see them in there anymore. But this is how that tank got when these guys bred. So I won't be able to see them. The water is crystal clear. The tanks, the, the tanks crap. But this is what I get out of them. Each one of those fish right there, 25 bucks a pop. And you can't even buy them. Good luck even finding them. Doc can see us sinless. You won't even find them. Wow, look how many have popped out of here. I got you, Henry. These are actually all waiting for Henry for the most part. But there is a bunch popping out. Caveman Aquatics wants to talk crap on my tanks. I'll tell you what, I was about to go savage on him. And I'll tell you another thing, too, is these guys will not debate me. I went ahead, I asked KG if he wanted to debate on the situation and on the topic. No, Caveman was like, oh, yeah, you would love that. Triple subscriber. Like, I could really care less what your subscriber count is. But you can't just go out there and talk all that smack, calling people lazy, this, that, and other on things that you don't understand. So that's where we're at. I was actually busy building all this stuff for a new rack here. Because with my, the style, keeping the aquariums more natural, I can keep more than three tanks, five tanks, ten tanks. I can keep as many tanks as I want. You see how many tanks I've had? Okay, I've sold a house for half a million dollars full of aquariums just like this, just like this. You would think most people would be like, oh man, after they did all that, why would they do it again? Bruh collectoritis but i have no problems doing it again i have plans for having so many aquariums it's ridiculous and it's about to get wild so water changes are good for certain scenarios but sometimes water changes aren't needed and the main takeaway from all this is to really connect with mother nature the way god intended it to be and then you can learn to understand on how aquariums, water systems, just nature actually works. Not just rivers, not just lakes, ponds, puddles, marshes, the edges, all the little tidbits here and there. Because if you look out in nature, it's not pristine. And he was trying to tell me, also Caveman Aquatics said that he was talking about how they're dirty, and I was like, well, they're not all dirty. I actually have more clear tanks than I do have dirty tanks. But for me, I do show a lot of the dirty tanks on here. And the big reason why I show the dirty tanks on here is because nobody else really, I don't know anybody else who really shows the dirty tanks like I show. And there's reasoning behind that. To me, there's they're more interesting because there's more going on than these little aquariums that are dirty than there are in like that big crystal clear cichlid tank. To me, I mean, that tank, it's cool with the big tank, but I mean, with the big fish, but after a while, that tank will get so boring for me. And with all these and just the whole method where I don't have to worry about water changes all the time, it's crazy. And that's another one. You guys are talking about how Caveman's pushing the Seachem. That's what it is. He's Seachem's pony boy. And uh, now, KG's pushing the Tropica, which ain't nothing wrong with that because we need people to supply things. Um, I, I think the Seachem product he was pushing was like Matrix or something. It's probably got some flocculants in it. It was funny, though. He asked some bulk reef supply company guy about trying to make that like a cr credit to his video that he actually made. Like, that's a saltwater guy. And what's that bulk reef guy? That's like saying my grandma said this. So it must be good. So I hate it too when they try to sugarcoat stuff. 
or try to put some aggression in there and then sugarcoat it. Like, I don't know, that stuff bothers me. But anyways, trying to give you guys my take on it. The thing with water changes for growing out fish, water changes is absolutely amazing. You can grow your fish a lot quicker with water changes. Not absolutely necessary. There's many fish that will grow without it. But if you do have bigger fishes, you will want to do water changes. Try not to overclean your uh, filter too. But I'm going to go ahead and get into the questions here. If you guys have any, because we would like to hear what the audience as well has to say because i'm there i actually wrote a bunch of notes here let's see beneficial bacteria catch that water changes chemistry and balance that's another thing and the dilution and solution and the reason why i would never say no water changes ever even if i never did do a water change in this i don't think i would ever say never because even in nature it does rain but when you've got your balance and stability of that ecosystem to where you don't have to change the water, you actually can cause more problems by changing that balance. So just be careful. So in other words, if you do got a natural tank and you want to make sure that you don't throw things off balance as much, try to do smaller water changes like 25%, 20%. Don't do the big ones. If you're trying to grow out, then yeah, boom, hit them big water changes if you want to. You don't absolutely have to. So many methods, so many ways to do this hobby. So for these channels to say this, that, and the other one's best, better than the other, there's purposes and reasoning for it all. And we've got to come together and stick together because there is so many divisions between what happens in our regular lives. This hobby is more for us to find that peace and uh, enjoy it without all that kind of politics of it. And really, a lot of people like to do water changes. I myself used to love doing water changes. That was like my meditation. That was my gong fu. That was the time that I could like kind of break away from the family, the madness of the world. I could get into my aquariums, maintain them. And then it's like instant gratification after you do clean and do your water changes. So, I mean, I can see how people really do love their water changes. So there's no real right or wrong. Father Fish is not wrong. KG is not wrong. Caveman just acted like a caveman. He'll, he'll do his thing. But I ain't got no beef on caveman. Like, I understand where he is in the hobby. And he's still got a lot of growing and going to do. He'll get there. Who knows? Who knows? But all right. Abstract Aquarius says, "How's the Caradina tanks going? And do you have any tiger shrimp yet?" So I do got some tiger shrimp. I got the uh, blue eye, the orange eye blue tigers. Let's see, and the tangerine tigers. Um, I got a lot of baby tangerine tigers and. The blue bolts, I need to get the uh, rice fish out of there because all the baby rice fish had gotten big all of a sudden. And I think that they've uh, eaten the baby blue bolts. That's what will happen when you're trying to breed fish. All right, so yeah, that's the water change deal. I didn't want to make this too long on here because we will have questions on Friday night. And I don't know. Oh, if there is a problem with your tank, usually you can tell too. You can give it a smell or something. If your tank does stink, do a water change. Your tank will tell you. You can read your aquarium if you need to do a water change. Uh, maybe clean your glass, and then maybe you don't have to do a water change, but uh, dilution is the solution to a sour tank. So you wanna dilute that water and you may not do it all in one day, but you could do it like 20% a day. So say if it's really sour, it's gone real sour, hit it with like a 50% the first day, and then maybe hit it with a 30%, and then maybe hit it with another 30% the next days after. That way it gets time for the beneficial bacteria to back up. 
Plus, if you got a sour tank, do not clean your filter. Do not clean the beneficial bacteria out because you will need that beneficial bacteria to actually battle the bad bacteria that's in your aquarium. I have had cloudy aquarium water and I have squeezed that beneficial bacteria into that aquarium and it helped clear it up. Or you could take a clean filter onto like a no filter that had turned a discolor or something and put that canister on there and it will polish it off for you. Because what happens when you're using those filters is it takes that water and it's pushing it through this really fine space between all these microorganisms that catch everything clump coming through that water. And as it gets pushed through all that beneficial bacteria that's on your foams and stuff, then all those microns of the tiniest bits get cleared out. So you get this like crystal clear polished water if you're using filters. And for some people, filters are good. Filters, some people don't need them. So for everybody, there's always something different. And we all got our own journey in this hobby. And we will all take our own routes. And I think a lot of it is just Father Fish and I with this natural method that we try to teach people is we're trying to bring them to A to B without as much commercialism in it as possible to where you guys can reconnect to the nature. Because if more of you guys are in the hobby that are enjoying it, not worrying so much about all the maintenance you're going to have to do and all this, that, and the other, because there's enough to do in life in the world that we don't want to spend all that time doing maintenance. So if we can make it easier for people who would like to keep aquariums, then they're more than likely to be able to enjoy them. And that's what it's about. I think everybody should have an aquarium to enjoy. It brings so much zen and peacefulness. I think there'd be a lot less aggression in the world if somebody had, if they all had a nice tank. But at the same time, you got the big fish keepers too. So that's a whole different kind of attitude where they like to feed other fish to big fish. So there's uh, there's all kinds of different styles to do. But I was going to try to hour or so. If you guys are still in here, well, I see you guys are still in here, but if you guys had a question, I am towards the bottom of the chat and still in here and need it. All right, I go down the list here. I think I hit all that. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, the drama. Oh, and about the drama of this topic. I got to talk about that too. So it's not really that bad of a thing that we're actually making these videos on. Should we water change? Should you not water change? caveman really razzing us like that's not even a really a big issue because if you ask me it's kind of good for the hobby spices it up a little bit gets people talking about things and uh i don't know i think it could be good i mean it's just youtube we're a very very small niche group especially me like for those who keep over uh 50 aquariums and above i think there was like one guy in my last poll and it's very interesting to know you guys keep mostly between two and ten aquariums. Very interesting. And let's see. Uh, yeah, just how there's many parts missing on a lot of their videos. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, there's a question. Nathan Hovey says, LRB, what's your opinion on the Seachem ammonia card you keep in the tank? I've heard both good and bad. So I've actually kept one. It's okay. Like, I used it once before, but I was like, man, I don't really need this. Especially after I learned more. So, that was more when I was keeping the, like, pristine CO2 tank with plants you never even heard of. And, um, after I learned more about plants and how they really absorb the ammonia, I didn't have to worry about it. Aqua balls, 60 tanks in the garage, my kind of people. Henry Figaro, 110 aquariums. Do you, Henry? If you got a 110 aquariums, bro, we got to talk. Because uh, you're my kind of people. Gumpy Beast, 25 filterless tanks and four stock ponds. See, isn't that nice? 
Some people think we're crazy, but really, I mean, keeping this many aquariums, we do need people to conserve fish. There's a lot of issues going on with ecological disasters all over the world that it does help to have all those fish keepers because I know a lot of people do battle that, oh, whole complex of keeping fish. That's a whole nother video in itself. And then, uh, let's see. And what's easier to maintain for people is not having that water change schedule. That's definitely one. Some in it for the challenge. Yep. Some in it for relaxation, meditation. Yeah, a lot of people just like to create, make things harder than what they should be. Um, really, this hobby, and a lot of people think that I do magical things here or because I've been doing this for so long, that's why I can do it. But simply, it's as simply as we try to discuss and teach you guys that as long as you've got some good water that it's not full of chemicals and gas and stuff, then healthy fish, then you, you should be good. It's really hard to kill fish. So the problem is not so much in the water change. And then, yeah, cichlid versus nano. This is pretty much what this is about, cichlid versus nano people, and us just having to try to find a way to come together. So let's see. I think I'm pretty much... Oh, go savage, but hope we can still be friends. I ain't go that savage. I could have went a lot more savage. If I actually had time to edit videos and then had to do this live, oh, it probably could have got ugly, but... Anyways, we don't need that. Peplin Creek Aquatics, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. It says, try and relax and enjoy the holiday tomorrow. Tomorrow's a holiday. What well, holidays tomorrow? I can't keep up with holidays these days. But, oh. <laughs> I got you. I got you. You're funny. You're funny. But uh, tomorrow, I've actually, i got to keep building ranks, bro. But thank you so much for the support. And that will definitely help on this whole empire we're trying to build here and um once again members they had their video come out if you guys didn't see that and i have to give the members their videos i know i was said i wasn't gonna make videos for a while because of building these racks but i had to talk on this subject these guys pretty much left me no choice but to come on here and clear the air hopefully i didn't cause more confusion in my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, I could talk this smoothly. But hopefully it came out smooth to you guys. And if you think so, yes, hit that like button like Carla asked. I said, don't forget. Appreciate that, Carla. And, um, yeah, I had to leave the aquariums empty because my garage floor started to crack. Oh, my God. That's crazy, Henry. I always worried about that at the old house. Um, let's see, Jennifer Brennan says, recently I had to go filter water from store, from the store. I have a plane tank. Do I have to use acid and alkaline buffers with the remineralizer? I only top off once in a while and do 10% water changes. So, as far as the mineralization, you definitely don't have to add acid and alkaline because you're just kind of... That acid that you're dumping in there is going to eat that alkaline that you're dumping in there. So you're just pretty much coming up with some neutral stuff. I don't know what your water is like or how hard your water is. But yeah, often when we do the whole no water change thing, it's just top offs. It's just top offs. And that's pretty natural within nature too with the water levels, how they rise and fall, rain and that with pools and ponds. Randy Redledge says, best soil to start Neocaridina, pool quartz, Brightwell. Um, Brightwell's more acidic. You don't want that. I would actually go with an eco-complete. And it depends on what kind of Neocaridina you're keeping. If you're keeping a red or a yellow or an orange Neocaridina, definitely want a black substrate like eco-complete from Carib C. And or sand. I'm not a big fan of the black sand. Some people like the blasting sand. It's always a major algae magnet for me. That's why I don't really care for it. But if you are keeping like Blue Dreams or the uh, Black Rose or something like that, a darker color shrimp, then you will want like a lighter substrate like Pool Quartz or Carib Sea. Um, 
natural light sander, natural light. Boom, 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 speed reading here to see if I could read these questions. Judy Basco says, you actually gave clarity in my head. I've been doing cha-cha. Do I water change or not? Yes, I can imagine. And that was the thing, too, is I felt like I had to make this video to help with that confusion because <laughs> a lot of people saying here and there, Henry, you really do have that many tanks? Bruh. You're trying to build a new fish room in your yard? Dude, you sound like my kind of people. Maybe one day you'll let me come check it out. We can do a video. If you're down for that. I don't know. Some people are down for that. Some people aren't. One day I will get back out there and start doing many more of those types of videos. Judy Basco, thank you. Thank you so much for that $10 super chat. That is really awesome of you. And I really appreciate that. So we are at the half hour mark. I didn't really want to go over the half hour mark here. But says, Guppy Beast says, can we talk about Brazilian penny waters growing out of my tank? I love it. It gets about four feet long, then starts melting. Then I'm sad again, then grows back. Um, I'm not sure why it melts. Well, I mean, I guess it does kind of melt back. It, it goes on its transitions where it like stretch out. And then what grows on top of it will be the cleaner stuff. And then as it grows up underneath, it kind of gets viney. But I don't know. I think it looks cool like that. I just don't mess with the viney part. I leave the viney part there, and it just keeps sprawling like bonkers. If you want to see what he's talking about, this is what he's talking about. Because, well, why not give you guys a visual? Before we hop off here, Brazilian Pennyworth. That's also got Bacopa, Arishia in it. This has got some chill in the fear, Thernia fish, which, once again, dirty glass, but God... There's like, I don't know how many baby fish. I don't know how well you guys can see this being on this internet. That's Taiwan Lily. More Brazilian penny war. We could actually look at tanks for a little while. This is my CPD breeding factory. But what do I know about water changes and keeping water? You know how many times this thing's had a water change since I've had it up for I don't even know how long? Not very often. And then you got tanks like this. Now, tanks like this, if your tank does start doing this, you do want to get in there and get that algae out. That needs attention. This needs attention. But there's actually cichlids hiding in there. Bunch of CPDs in here as well. Need to move the ones back down. See, there's a bunch in here. That's the thing about CPDs. There could be like 50 in here, but then they all hunker down into like one spot or corner and you can't ever see them. How's the co how's it coming as far as the uh, visual here? How's it look? Look at this tank. This tank's sick with all this Bacopa. And I had to sacrifice. This tank was actually really nice with a ton of rotalia. You can see it under here. But sometimes we got to sacrifice tanks for what we love to do. But instead, I've got some of the rarest fish in here, the Glossolopus maculosus babies in there getting big. So, I mean, I sacrificed some plants for that. But look at this Bacopa tank. Isn't this thing sick? But what am I talking about? I have no clarity water with these no water changes that's actually a really rare Clossiolensis rainbow fish we're supposed to get more red I'm trying to get some babies out of them one of gary's new one gary langs that he caught off the expedition one of his new ones what are you doing little guy these guys need to get into their new forever home these guys these synodonis lucid pennants they're gonna end up going down into this tank. If you guys got centered on a sluice of penis, definitely recommend putting them on a bottom tank. That way you can see them if you do got racking systems. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna hop off here. Seen a few tanks. There's still a lot of algae and things I do gotta clean up. There's always maintenance to do. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more, learn more, I'm gonna be here for a while. So hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Have a great one. Do 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 do
Look at them dirty tanks. Filthy, filthy animal. Grr, baby, grr.